I had the absolute privilege by being joined on TikTok Live by professional Canadian curler Emma Miskew. She took questions from fans, we chatted it up and had a great time. That is what you're about to see. I just wanted to explain really quickly, before we get into it, that her video seems a little bit fuzzy and the reason is because I screwed something up. I didn't have the settings right on TikTok where we were side by side. I had her as like a miniature video and me as a large one and so I had to blow her up in this video to make her look the same and so she comes out a little bit fuzzy unfortunately. But the audio is great, the discussion is amazing, there's a lot of good stuff we touch on here. Please do enjoy, get at it, this is a great listen. <laughs> How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. I see Zabotron's in here. Got some people coming in already. Perfect. Uh, it's a good, we finally got this together. Finally made this happen. Yes, it's been a long time coming. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to have you. It's a pleasure. We're just, you know, curling down here in Texas. We're no, nothing too special. Oh, that's amazing, though. I love that. You have better weather, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's not bad right now. It's not bad at all. We just got to, we're expecting a lot of snow this week, so I'm jealous of your location. <laughs> we're supposed to maybe hit freezing tonight, I think, oh. but just during the night. It's not so bad. <laughs> not so bad, no. Not so bad at all. Maybe cover the hoses for a second, but. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you guys have a little bit of downtime. That's why we're able to do this, right? Yeah, we're off now until the new year, which is really nice. It's nice to have a little bit of a Christmas break. Um, it's lots of work from August until basically the last time just ended, um, depending on the schedule that we make for ourselves. So it's nice to have a little bit of a breather um, heading into Christmas and the new I'm, year. And then we'll be back at it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's nice to just take a little time off. Yes, it's a lot, especially the season's so long now. We love it. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way, but it is starting. We are training starting in August. So being able to take just a couple weeks off and um, just practice a little bit and just go to the gym a little bit, but not feel like we're preparing for an event right away is a very nice break. Awesome. Since it is the holiday season, do you have any plans going on? Just staying at home? Uh, yeah, staying home. I really wanted to go somewhere hot this year, but the flight prices were insane. Um, I think everyone was saying the same thing. So opted to just stay home and relax at home. Um, so that'll be nice. So I'll be able to see some family, catch up with some friends and um, just enjoy, enjoy the break. Awesome. Yeah, well, since it you? is the holiday season, can I make it a little more festive? For a little, <laughs> get the hats on, maybe a little more... Casual here, make it chill. Yeah, I wish I that's had all right. lights to wear under on my neck. That would be. I think the battery's dead. That's the only problem. I don't think they work right now. But still <laughs> that's right. okay. It's a thought that counts. <laughs> uh, we got people coming in, so we'll see what's happening there. Sorry, yes, I see Zabotron. She's always around. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, and uh, we got Jason who says hi, Emma. It's cool to see you. Uh oh, well, I'm happy to be here. Can you see the chat too? Yeah, you can. Right? Oh yeah, I can. Of course. Okay. Oh. Um. Now we got some of these usernames. I swear. <laughs> Dibby Dibby Bobby Dibby Bussy. That's hello. <laughs> oh, hello to everyone. <laughs> the question just about our next curling tournament in there. Uh, we are competing next. Um, I think it's January 10th out in Camrose, Alberta. So it's close to Edmonton. So we'll head out there um, early January, maybe do a little bit of training first and then, um, yeah, hopping in and it's another Grand Slam of Curling event. So it will be televised, which is nice, at least uh, on Sportsnet for whoever gets that. But um, we're very uh, grateful that we get to be a part of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see the next question. Like, will it be televised? Yes, it's televised on Sportsnet. So it's the same as the last event we were just at. Um, so we hope to get some uh, TV time, hopefully during the week, and uh, be at playing on the weekends. And then you never know what can happen. Okay. Uh, something year TV. Is that a thing? I've never heard of that one. Uh, maybe that's in the U.S.? Maybe. No. 
I know we get things on ESPN3 sometimes, or we oh. maybe bootleg streams on Discord from oh, other places. For international, she says. So it's depending on where you are, you can follow along there. Probably oh. get this, the stream. It's, uh, yeah, there's pretty good coverage for if there is a way to find it. Um, they're pretty good at covering a lot of oh. teams. So oh, getting barked at here. <laughs> What's the uh, dog's name? My Luna. I have two. I've got Luna as my older dog and then Harley. Um, she's just just not a puppy anymore. I still call her a puppy when she misbehaves, but uh, they're they're little besties, so they keep me oh, on my yeah. toes. <laughs> yeah. She's not chewing things up around the house anymore? Puppy. No, not really. We're lucky that way now. <laughs> there are quite a few shoelaces that were ripped to shreds for a while. I feel that. I've had dogs like that. Yeah. Tear up a few carpets in some apartment buildings in the Ooh. past. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, they're mischievous. Okay, I see. Is the Continental Cup still on? Unfortunately, no. Um, that was a great event for the players in terms of it being really fun to play. But um, at, in COVID, they ended up dropping it because they couldn't justify having that event be in the bubble. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and then they ended up not bringing it back, which we were, I know a lot of the players from all over the world were really disappointed in that because it was um, a little bit of an event where it was intense and that you wanted to win, like Team Canada or Team North America, like as a team you wanted to win. Um, but you got to play some with some different people and play some different formats, curling like mixed doubles or just mixed curling. So it was really fun for us. So when they dropped it, we were a little bit disappointed, but um, we know that they're always doing what they can to do, be the best for, uh, give us the best events. So we couldn't be that disappointed about it, more just um, missing out on the opportunity to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> for sure. Um, I see curling shoes is here, but he hasn't asked a question yet. Craig, don't be shy. You definitely <laughs> step up to the plate here. That weird username says, the money thing in Alberta with the blue and yellow stones. I don't know what that's all about. Well, I'm not sure. I may have to elaborate. I don't know. Uh, yeah. The I, I think different curling clubs have different colored handles depending on where you go to. So I hadn't noticed a consistent rock color handle. Um, but maybe there's more information. Oh. oh okay. The skins game. Skins game. Okay. Okay. Makes more sense there. That's also gone. Um, I think they were having trouble scheduling it around different provinces, their provincial championships that they were hosting, because a lot of them are in January and they aren't all at the same time. So I think that they were having trouble. There were a couple of years that we had to decline going because we were at provincial championships at the same time. Um, so I think that it just became an event where not everyone, not the teams that they invited could go. And then they ended up kind of dropping. I think that's what happened. We, um, we couldn't go a couple of times and then I, I know that, uh, I forgot about it a bit. Now it's gone. <laughs> so unfortunately that one's gone too, but the slams ended up having way more events on the schedule than they used to. So, um, like there's six of them. So we're pretty lucky that way. Okay. So all the, all the fun <laughs> events that people like are gone apparently or the ones they used to know. Yeah. What about well, some of the new events coming up? Some new events, and then there's still uh, the Spotty Tournament of Hearts and the Briar and the World Championships and all yep. that. But there was a lot of different. I think COVID kind of made everyone, or the um, at least the sports organizations, take a look at what events they were throwing so that they could reevaluate. And if they wanted to make any changes, that was the time because there was almost like two years of very inconsistent events that were being hosted. Um, so that's my guess is they just took a look at everything, tried to make the, the best schedule that they could for the players and TV and all that fun stuff. Exactly. Ooh, I actually like that question. What's your least favorite curling rule? Good one. Take that one. <laughs> well, it's one of them that's coming up or been proposed at this point. Um, I think there's quite a few new rules that aren't my favorite, but my least favorite um, by far is the no extra end rule that's been proposed. Um, there we go. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very much not a fan. I think there's a lot that goes into 
planning how you um, score during a game to try to be tied with him or either in the last end or an extra end, however that plays out. Um, but the biggest reason that I really don't like it is because if you are, let's say one up with hammer in the last end, um, the team that is trying to steal is the team that's throwing all the draws and learning the draw speed because they're throwing up guards and coming around the guards and the team that's trying to not give up that steal and to score their point to win the game is peeling. So all end, even though they've had control of the whole game, are peeling and then all of a sudden it's you're going to a draw to the button because you give up one steal and one team is very clearly going to know the draw speed a little bit better because they've been playing it the whole time um, and I just think that 10 end games should not be decided on a draw to the button um, if one team has played the whole game to have hammer in the extra end they deserve to have hammer, hammer in the extra end and yeah that's that's my least favorite so far. The no ticks is we knew that was coming for a while. I still think you should be able to tick, but I'm okay with it. it it's a rule that we've we've known was coming, but the no extra ends is is that's a tough one to accept. <laughs> yeah, well, you've shocked the question, the person who asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> Baby D Bob, but we'll see if I, I'm going to keep trying. Uh, you've shocked them because they didn't know there were no more extra ends. So. Yes, no more. They're gone. It's new. They they uh, tried it out at the World Championships last year. So it's not in, like it hasn't been in a, at an event where um, a big event we've had. To, we played it in the points bet event in September. And it, we ended up having that draw for the win. And it was an, a single elimination event, too. So it was like double whammy. It's like a draw to the button for the win. Plus, it's single elimination. And we had to play on a side that hadn't been played all game so didn't know the draw speed so we ended up when losing that game and they're like that's a dumb role we'd rather have played the extra end but that's just how they're trying to they think that yeah. it's going to make the game more interesting for tv but i don't think anyone who's like joining in on tv is at that point in the game is like that's it I'm done. I can't focus anymore. If only there's just one more shot. <laughs> so I think it's, it's kind of like ending the game with rock, paper, scissors, right? It just kind of, that's just a finish to the whole thing. Yeah. Very it's quickly. Just, it, it's completely a toss up. And I think that there's a lot, like I said, that goes into planning to have hammer in those important moments, like in an extra end or in the last end and taking that away, those extra end hammers away by just making it, one shot um i know it's like exciting but there's so much on the line that we would rather play the whole end and um if we deserve to win the game we'd like to do it the right way exactly well nemo's gravy who's been around a while on tiktok i do know them they asked do you think the no tick is going to be in doubles soon oh, that's a good question i don't know if they're going to change any doubles rules yet just because they're unsure it's not it hasn't gone um, so mainstream on TV yet that they're looking to <laughs> make changes to it. And the more you change a curling rule, the more you're just going to confuse people. So I don't know if they're going to change that quite, quite yet, but um, it's a good, it's interesting because not many people would play the tick in mixed doubles on a center line guard. It doesn't happen very often at all. It's you mainly want to get around it to make taps or freezes. Um, but around the corner on the power play, you see the team that's winning play the corner tick a lot. Um, so I, I think it would be hard to make a rule to say like you can't take that corner guard, but, you never know. I, honestly, nothing would surprise me anymore. Even just since we came on the scene, there's been a lot of rule changes. So um, I haven't heard anything about it, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised at some point. I don't think it'll happen yet. Well, you can always just play on our slanted hockey ice where the, the high side is unreachable. <laughs> you just put the power play over there. Nothing's touching those rocks. You're safe no all in. Gonna tick. <laughs> Nobody. Um. Nemo's gravy adds that they just watch the first two ends and the last two extra ends anyway. They okay, skip all the middle ones. All right. Okay. Um, Tyler, also always in our lives, and he is always about hitting, slamming hard. Um, he asks, what's your pregame ritual? Um, pregame ritual. Um, 
well, we always drive to the rink as a team and listen to music in the car. And then uh, we'll go get dressed and go out to the ice and uh, we'll have a little pregame meeting. And then we, we stretch and um, chat, but we're very much like our own little unit out there. So it's not really um, a ritual, but we do have like planned out, like we eat at this time before a game and we leave the rink at this time before a game and uh, that sort of stuff. But there's no um, real ritual, you would say. We're more just very regimented with our scheduling. I understand. Um, Craig from Curling Shoes, Craig's Curling Shoes asks, do you ever put together less competitive teams and travel to play fun spiels in the U.S.? And sidebar, if you do that, would you be on my team? <laughs> that sounds really fun. I, I'm always down to play for in um, events for fun because a lot of our events are so intense and there's so much on the line. And while those are also fun and I enjoy them a lot, uh, it would be it is fun to play with no pressure and just go out there and have some laughs. So I have not yet traveled to the U.S. for an event, but that doesn't mean I won't. And okay. yeah, send me the details and if I can make it happen. <laughs> There's still hope, Craig, just send her a message. Maybe, maybe yeah. she'll be on your big spiel team. Never know. Um, <clears throat> someone called Zabotron asks, what's your favorite curling memory? Um, I have to say that winning the um, Olympic <laughs> trials in our hometown, like my hometown since like I was born and raised in Ottawa. Um, the Olympic trials were here. I grew up going to Suns games in that building, um, winning the Olympic trials in that building at home with all of our friends and family there um, was the most amazing and memorable moment of my life. Um, becoming an Olympian in my hometown, just I, there's something that I'll never forget about that. And uh, I still get goosebumps when I talk about it. It was quite the week we battled really hard and um for it just to all come together um and it'll be so um amazing and i just yeah that's something i will never be able to get it like it'll always be up there i'll just i think about I it imagine. all the time and um winning world championship was also amazing uh it was our third time there and we had won a bronze and a silver and then to to win that gold medal and be able to bring back gold for Canada was um, an unbelievable, unbelievable memory as well. So those two are both big. I'd have to say winning in Ottawa would be the top, but they were, they were both very cool. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we close our eyes in the club and take a shot. And if it hits, we pretend like that's happening to us. Like we won a big event, but uh, it's about as close as we're going to get to understanding that feeling. I feel like. I, I mean, all, all moments are important moments for, <laughs> like, whether you, you have to be able to celebrate everything, but that was definitely my my top. No, that's that's fantastic. I, I can only imagine how great that is, and I'll try to pretend like I'll ever have that moment <laughs> when I curl. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Jason asks, how many years? Have you and Homan been curling together? This is a this goes back a while. It it does. Um, we've been playing together since we were eleven years old, so it's been twenty two years now. So a long time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still young, still young. Many more years ahead. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's been a wild ride, and um, we've been through everything together um, since we were basically like we were full children at the time just trying to figure out if this little team that our dads put together would work and we uh had a lot of fun but um she's like more than a friend to me and a teammate to me like we she's like my family like we've been together for so long that we're like family and um we we still motivate each other and um learn from each other and it's it's been really fun i when I wouldn't even know what my life would be like had that um, relationship not started at that young of an age. So it shaped, shaped my life for sure. Yeah. It's incredible how long you've been together and how much you've accomplished. It's, it's pretty, a pretty long resume on your LinkedIn there. Yeah. 
I do wonder though, as you hit your thirties, do you feel anything start to creak a little bit? People talk about that in their thirties, little a few <laughs> extra pains you didn't have before. Um, I feel like as soon as and everyone I talk to, it's like as soon as you turn thirty, there's these little things that happen that you never noticed before. I'm like, well, it's probably important to do a cool down after the game, like something that you would never really when you're younger and everything's great. You're like, I don't. I forgot. I forgot to stretch after the game. But no, I, I think I consider myself pretty lucky overall. I've had a couple little things over the years, but um, overall, uh, everything's holding up pretty well. That's good. That's good. I notice as I go through my 30s, it's just every year there's a new thing, I feel like. I mean, where, yeah, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Who is your favorite team to play against? Ooh, that's a good question. Tell me with the questions tonight. Yeah, um, we get to play a lot of different teams all the time, so that's a it's a hard one to answer in terms of a favorite team to play against. Um, I I mean, there's the top teams that we get to see often, and it always is it's fun to feel like we can like up our game and and really try to put the pressure on so like teams like Hasselborg and Tiranzoni internationally are always fun to play against they like to play with rocks and play and um I feel like it's always one shot here or there that will change the outcome of the game so that's really good um for TV and then uh, teams like uh Anderson we've obviously seen a lot of so our team's looking a little different this year but theirs looks the same and um it's always a uh, fun to play against them we know that They'll make a lot of shots, and we know we have to bring our game. Yeah, that uh, Ines's team kind of turned into a bit of a I don't know if it's a rivalry, but like a challenge because she went to not oh, sorry, dogs going oh, I'm on. here, I'm listening. Okay, <laughs> it's fun. Um, you know, that first year she won the Scotties, right? It was COVID, and then she didn't get to go to Worlds, then she won again and then again, and so it's kind of turned into like a, a three peat now. So I feel like, yeah. Kind of have like a yeah, target on her it, back now, right? Yeah, and I think it always was. Um, I know the first year they beat us in the final and they played amazing. Um, and uh, then, or was it? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to like think back to, and then last year we, um, I was there without Rachel. So it was a bit of a different experience for us. Um, just trying to, to, figure out what what we need to do to 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 win out there obviously like if we had I think we went four and four or something in the first round and then uh we didn't make it on to the next round so that was unfortunate but uh at least it wasn't us that they beat in the final of the third year so I'll take it. <laughs> I was just scrolling through someone said oh, where was it I will never forget Rachel's face when Carrie missed that shot still gives me chills I don't know what shot they're talking about. Uh, I think that's the shot at the trials. So she okay. had a really flat, it was a really hard shot. It was a flat double um, to force an extra end. Um, but she had to navigate. We had a rock. They had another rock and they needed to count that was kind of behind the second rock they were doubling. So it definitely wasn't easy. And um, it was over curling. And we, I could tell it was over curling and like, I started shaking and I was like nudging Rachel, but yeah, it was just like a moment of realization when it actually happened. It was like just full, yeah, full chills. That's awesome. Yeah. So another uh, Canadian curler that comes into our lives a lot, Mitchy Marie, getting a shout out. She has a question. Uh, what's the best training exercises for sweeping? Uh, that is a good question. Sweeping is way harder on the body than I think a lot of people realize until they try it. Um, mostly it's just upper body endurance, um, in terms of the actual motion of sweeping, but then there's the element of the core strength. And that's what's like, everyone I talk to who tries curling for the first time after they're like, it was my abs that hurt the next day. I'm like, yeah, it's so different than anyone would expect. So, um, I think just working on overall like core strength, kind of in those planking positions and then upper body endurance, like on a rowing machine, instead of doing running, just using your arms for that endurance will always help with being able to, uh, sweep for longer. <laughs> um, there's, it's only so long that you can sweep continuous, before your body's just gonna <laughs> slow down even oh, yeah. like for us there's no amount of training that can help that but 
um, we do our best to train as much as we can so that we can sweep for as long as we can. Just letting my, dog, my dogs. Oh, yeah, go get them. I understand. Believe me. Uh, <laughs> whenever we teach classes, we always have people that that's like their first comment. They're like, man, sweeping is actually really hard. Like you get really tired. Or like they ask, how do you stay warm on the ice? And I'm like, let's start playing the game. Once we start sweeping a bit, you'll you'll see how we stay warm on the ice. It's not that hard. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Um, back to Tyler, who again, we gotta understand context. He loves takeouts. He's always recommending a takeout, <laughs> even when it may not be there. He wants you to explain, if you would, your most epic takeout, the one that just sticks in your memory. And he does add that he loves takeouts. Uh, I also like takeouts. Um, I, oh, that's, that's hard because there's been so many years playing third for the majority of my career. I've had a lot of them. I've had a lot, a lot. Um, I think just like going a little bit more recently, we were, all the games of the slams are very important and, um, you basically can't lose a game uh, without risking setting yourself into a position where you end up in a tiebreaker or something. So in our second game in the last round, Robin, we were in a situation oh. in the seventh end where if we clear it out, we're pretty likely to win the game. And I made a really long double peel. So it was a very high guard and a very tight guard. And I made them both go. And then on my next shot, I made a slash and their end was over. So that's more recent memory. And the, that felt really good to be able to just kind of end the end for them there and know that we were in a pretty good spot going into the eighth. Um, but yeah, the, I love run back. So I, it's just hard to remember <laughs> All of them in all the games. Hey, Tyler, imagine having so many fantastic shots just in this season, let alone <laughs> your whole career, that you can't even remember all of them. And your top two are just from the last couple months. <laughs> just try to think about that, all right? <laughs> Curly I didn't shoes want it to close. sound cocky. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. We know who you are. We know your resume. We know what you can do. It's not cocky. Uh, Curling Shoes adds that he's got you and me and... He's got one other, so that makes four for a team. Hollywood Blockbuster. Bonspiel. All right, mark it. Let's sign up that team. All right, let me know. I'll, uh, <laughs> if I'm free, I will be there. You heard it, Craig. Freynold <laughs> says, Emma is awesome and team home and rocks, which I agree with. Thank you. <laughs> um, have you? Oh, oh we're going to get into it here. Have you ever been approached to play for another team? Um, not exactly. Um, there's a lot of, at the end of the quadrennial, there is a lot of conversation that goes on um, between players to figure out who, what teams can be formed. So I, there, there were conversations like at the end of this quadrennial between people and I like there were a couple messages that came through no one it not really in a way that was like approach to leave my team and go somewhere else but we did announce that Joanne would be retiring so there were quite a few conversations just around that but I uh, think most most people know that I'm pretty um happy with playing with Rachel so there's always some conversations here and there but nothing was like a serious approach to go and play for someone else it was um, I'm, I'm, uh, pretty content <laughs> and I think that, um, we've, uh, so. we've been able to continue to, to push it, re push ourselves and strive. And we hit, we hit parts where it's hard to keep, to keep going. And it, some losses are really hard to take, but, um, we seem to always come out of it on the better end together. So. Love it. Um, Basically, no one approaches her. She approaches them, and maybe they bring someone in, like Tracy. <laughs> we got. We were really lucky that Tracy was available. We had no idea, um, and then yeah. we just we found out, and it became this. What well, we had been looking for someone to fill um, Joe's spot at lead, and we found out Tracy's available. And like, we need to think about this a little bit. Um, and yeah, we're really happy. A fantastic pickup in the off season, right there. It seems to be working out. Things are going pretty well. 
Yeah. And she's an awesome person to have around. She's just so easy to be around and um, brings so much knowledge to the game and also like a positive attitude, but is honest. It's just like just everything. It's just great. I really enjoy playing with her. <laughs> um, do you golf? Someone wants to know. Yes, I, I golf. I'm, I'm not great. I have, I think I have the ability to be good. I can hit the ball pretty well when, when everything's going well, but I don't really know how to fix it. If it's not, my short game is not great. It's not, that's the part <laughs> that's, where I, that's my downfall. I'm no The old curling golf combo. Yeah. Like chipping, I, if I can't full swing, it's probably ending up over the green. It's just, yeah, that's where I, that's where I, don't do very well with it anymore. It's all about the takeouts, right? Not about yeah. the draws. <laughs> Full swing or nothing for me. When I golf, everything sliced. And after years of people trying to fix it, it just never happened. And I kind of just gave up. Honestly. Yeah, just aim, I, aim a different direction. Just turn left and, yeah, shoot normally. And it actually <laughs> goes on the fairway. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of doing it. Um, all right, Tyler, I'll, I'll bring it up. Tyler asks again, Advice for me to not jinx myself when throwing a stone because I always say something and then it happens negatively, as I say. Like, um, wouldn't it be bad if they scored five here and then they do? Oh, so, well, so I work on like the, the karma. Jinxing. It can't actually happen. Um, so you just have to, you might be like willing it to happen a little bit. So just think positive thoughts yeah. instead of saying that stuff. That's all I can suggest. It really but feels really, that way. Uh, you're talking to someone who's very superstitious for no reason, but I can't get it out of my oh. head. And I know that it doesn't impact it, but I'm like, but if it does, I have to make sure I do my part. So I hear you, but you definitely can't control it just by saying it. <laughs> okay. Maybe it just gets in my head and I, I who knows. Yeah. But Okay. So you're a little superstitious. What are your good luck charms? Uh, there's no good luck charms. It's mainly just okay. weird stuff about like the what <laughs> it sounds bad but like what socks i'm wearing for curling and like our jersey and making sure that the same one goes on and it's silly and, and it, i know it has no impact but if we lose a game i'm like sweet i get to put on a new pair of socks and then, yeah so wait do you wear the same pair of socks until you lose yes okay yeah is it one pair of socks or is there like multiple copies of the same sock. Um, I have multiple copies of the socks, yeah. but it's the actual same socks. It's really bad. It's not, it doesn't. No, this is pretty awesome, I actually. I should not be doing that, but um, here we are. So that's a weird one. And, Do you wash uh, them in between games? I'm going to get into this. Or uh, does that ruin the good luck? Um, so if we play in like a slam and we're having like, the amount of games that we have in a slam, I will keep the same <laughs> socks on so they just I air them out in between <laughs> but going into like a Scotties or something I won't do like it's impossible and same with the jersey um I'll wear the same jersey for an entire slam like I we have multiple jerseys in our bag I will wear the same one until we lose and uh you go to Scotties and it's imp like if we're playing okay. an extra two ends for the games and there's way more games and it's just impossible we actually have to do laundry while we're there Go find, go find a washer, do a little laundry on our jersey. So like you can't just wear the same jersey the whole game. It will, I think, disintegrate at that point. So we, uh, it's mainly just a slam thing. And hopefully I can just get out of it because it's really gross. This is awesome. So I need to go find those socks I wore last night because I had a good shot. I need to pull those out and make sure they don't get washed for a few more months. Yeah, they hold all the luck in there. Okay, it's going to be a smelly season, but we can, we can make it happen. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, <laughs> let's see. But uh, Jason asked, what is your second sport? But it sounds like it might be golf. Is it golf? Yeah, I used to play. So golf would definitely be the one I would play the most. Um, over the winter, I don't do any other full sports. Just I can't commit to anything. So, no. um, And skiing or snowboarding, I'm not to me, it's not worth the risk of injuring myself and letting my team down because I'm, I'm not that good at it. Um, but for uh, in the summer, I 
haven't lately, but I really like playing tennis just for fun. Um, golf, because you kind of go out whenever you want and it's social. Um, but uh, I used to play soccer quite c- competitively as a kid and I loved it, but it became a choice between that and curling with the schedules kind of both going uh soccer going into the winter and curling getting longer so i i chose yeah. curling interesting yeah soccer is an intense sport uh are you watching the world cup a little bit here and there um Thanks. whenever i can in between curling and practice and gym and and All a little bit of things. work here and there but <laughs> <laughs> It's always, okay. it's, it's always fun to watch athletes at the top of their game and, oh, yeah. and see them thrive. So, Who is your team in the World Cup, or do you have one? Well, I was cheering for Canada, so it was a short one, but yeah, uh, that's yeah. okay. I was, imp- I was happy that they were there, and they got to experience it. And they were in a tough pool. So. Nice. I was rooting for Croatia. They made it to the final last time. They made it only to the semi this time. Not quite. Oh, close. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Way closer than who I was cheering for. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe next time for that. Um, okay, a little bit technicals here. Uh, is Tracy having a different broom than the rest of the team? A thing now on her old... Oh, wait, I, I gotta reread this. Is Tracy having a different broom than the rest of the team? A thing now on her old team she did? Um, what? I didn't know about her old team. So for... Um, for us we goldline came out with a new broom this year um so we've been using their broom for sweeping and throwing and she found that when she was tapping in the house she just preferred the feel of the goldline air versus the new goldline broom um and then so she's just been playing with that um or using that in the house and it was just mainly so because she just liked how it felt but we used to use that one um, for years so it's not that she has to use a different broom um the handle of hers is different but we were just trying to uh there's different handles that goldline has and that one is um a specific handle for uh like the rainbow handle so we wanted to have that on the ice and then the handles that we are using are all just red and they're sticky at the end so we don't slide so there's reasons for all of it but it's not because she wants to be not matching the team it's just it just ended up being how it worked out it may not be good luck if she doesn't match the team gotta have you know uniformity yes and she's wearing the same uniform it just brooms are a little bit of a uh preference at that point and i feel like at some point she might switch to the broom that we're using but just she got used to this one and just wanted to stay with that well i know some teams have like a different broom for sliding out and a different broom for skipping right i've seen that yeah. yeah. And she still throws with this one. She just, um, it was, I think when she was tapping in the house with the other one, uh, she just didn't like how it felt as much, uh, was I think what happened, but it's been a while now. It just ended up being, this is uh, what, yeah. this is what we do right now. <laughs> this is how it is for pros. You can feel yeah. the difference in how the broom taps in the house. I, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Billy M. Reeds, who's also been on here a long time. We've been connected on here for a good long while. Um, he is a curler in Canada as well, and he likes books. Uh, he says, obviously, Team Homan is the best. Great way to start the question. Uh, as the best new lineup on the women's side. But who do you expect to, oh, oh, there we go, have the most success on the men's side? Ooh. Well, first of all, thank you for the confidence <laughs> on the new team. We're pretty excited we're working hard um for the men it's tough because they're actually there's some teams that were close and similar but very few teams that fully kept their lineup um so in terms of um canadian i assume you meant canadian men's teams um like i'll never count gushu out uh he's proven time after time that dangerous too uh, he is a winner um, and with the new team, like EJ is a very good curler as well. And it might take a little bit. It always takes a little bit with a new player to fit in, but who knows? Oh, my goodness. Um, it always takes a little bit for a new player to fit in, but they seem to be done pretty well. So they'll be good. I think what showed last event was, um, like Botcher's team is rolling now. And I think they're going to be, they have a very good and talented lineup. So I think that they're going to, 
be very tough to beat um, come, especially like trying to peak. I think a lot of teams are trying to peak at the Scotties or the Briar. And I think those two are both going to be at the, the top there. Uh, there's, there's a lot of great new lineups though. So it's, it's hard. Like the men's side is, it could be, it could be anyone. It's lots, lots there of talent. A lot of shakeups this last year. Indeed. Yes. But I think COVID made money... that a little bit more prevalent than normal. Usually some mm-hmm. teams stay together or three or four stay together. And I think just um, with it being such a difficult time for a couple of years in terms of events and unknowns and all that, it ended up just being a, almost a full shakeup for so many teams. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to place any money in the betting, at least go with Gushu or Guju, sorry, Guju. Yeah, I think that, yeah, them or Botcher are kind of like where they seem to be just like they're going to be peaking at the right time, I think. But uh, I wouldn't, I honestly, Dunstone's having a great year as well. And always like, yeah, money. you never, yeah, there's lots of talent. That Botcher team is interesting. It does seem like they're getting their, whatever their gel is happening and something's coming up that finally. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we, like our first couple of events, everyone was saying that our team wasn't gelling and stuff. And we're like, it's only been like two events. And um, we were just trying to figure out our new roles. And that sometimes takes some time. Um, it's not always automatic just to figure out new roles on a team. There's a yeah. lot that goes into that. So that, that casual comment that was dropped about being weird, that's just never going to go away, is it? She's never well, going to live that down. He blew it up. So now it's not going away, <laughs> but that's because we, we made it big. <laughs> it's, uh, I think just um, knowing that it takes a little bit of time to learn something new. I think um, people tend to forget that Rachel and I have been playing back end together since we were 11. And all of a sudden, instead of being in the house with me, she's sweeping and then there's someone new that she's communicating with in the house. Um, of course that's going to be hard, um, and an adjustment. And I thought she was doing it very well, considering that's a huge change as a skip, um, and a career skip at that to go from calling the game and having just me going into the house with her to having, um, a different person in Tracy who is amazing, but she's, her and I are different personalities in the house and she has to manage sweeping and not see lines while she's calling the game. Like it's a very big change. So um, when they were saying that there was the weird comment, we're like, yeah, it probably is weird because she hasn't ever done that before. Um, (laughs) Give it a second. (laughs) She'll figure it out. So, um, but we were thinking like at the time it was when we've heard that we were (laughs) called weird, we're like, that's funny because I thought she was doing a really great job. So it's just the outside perception of um, critiquing a little bit. And I mean, that's their jobs to critique. But uh, for us, we were like, oh, we thought it was going quite well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that- the results were there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it must be weird, though, for Rachel because you, know, you do go years calling the lines and being in control and to stand back and not have that full control. Like you're still vice, right? You can still say some things, but you're not totally in charge. Yeah. Have- I think- Yes, but yes. we have like a t- like a lot of the decisions that we make for strategy are team decisions. So we all still have a voice, and I still feel like I have a voice when it comes to strategy. And Rachel has a voice, and Sarah has a voice, and Tracy is very open and wants to hear our voices. Um, we want the strategy that we call to be the best strategy for our team. So um, she's leading that. But if she knows that if we don't like it, we are going to say something and she's totally fine with that or find another option maybe because there's always options in strategy and it can be ice dependent or what Rachel wants to be left as a last rock thrower is very important. Um, If she's seeing something, it's good to hear it. So um, it's been an adjustment, but I think that it also is uh, strategy is a team thing. It's not um, an individual thing. Yeah. I mean, it definitely is. Uh, has there been a moment where you felt a little tension? Like most of the time things are going well, but you know, sometimes mom and dad fight, it happens. <laughs> Has there been a moment where there was a call and there was like a, you could sense a little disagreement? I think there's a, like, there's been times where we didn't all agree on the call, but that's going to yeah. happen. But Which there's happens. never been any yeah. tension about it. Right. It's, 
um, ultimately the person who's throwing the rock needs to feel comfortable throwing the rock. So that's most important when it's Rachel throwing the last rock because it's the last rock at the end. Um, and you want her to know that she can make those shots uh, and feel like she's make, calling the right shot and throwing the right shot. Um, but down the lineup, like there's shots that I'm like, I think I'd rather, I'd rather play this. And maybe that's not the perfect call, but that's what I feel like I can make in that moment and what I'm seeing. And the team's always like, yep, no, if if that's what you're seeing, then that's good. So, um, it's ultimately like a thrower choice. And, um, and sometimes you throw her sister or something they don't love because it's, (laughs) it's the right call, but um, we've, we've kind of gone with that and, um, it, it's worked quite well. And I think we all know the game quite well. So there's not a lot of tension about it. We just, we like, we talk it through. We've been a little short on the clock because we talk it through a lot, but <laughs> we, we make sure that we come to the right, right decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bibby D Bob, whatever, uh, you keep asking a question. I'm just going to, I'm going to take this one. A little bit. Um, it says, is there anything that gold line made that you don't like? And maybe she'll answer that, but. Oh. Um, I think when, when you're sponsored by someone, <laughs> you're not going to speak too ill of them, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I uh, no, but they always come out there. What's really cool um, about the fact they've been sponsoring us for so long too, is that if we have suggestions on products that we think um, could be really great, they are always a full open ears uh, in trying to make that happen so like they're always coming out with new stuff and new shoes and new brooms and um and not all shoes work for that the same for a player like i couldn't just put on any pair of shoes and and love them they have to work for me so i love the gold line shoes i chose but there are other gold line shoes that i didn't feel like i could slide as well in but it depends on where you're how you slide and where you're weight is in your foot on how a slide feels and how those shoes feel on you. So I would say that there's not, I haven't pinpointed any products that I don't like, but I do have preference on products that I love Mm -hmm. that I can choose from. Nice. Yeah. So I've actually never had a gold line, anything, but one thing I have noticed, so this isn't like sponsored or propaganda or anything. uh, I've noticed they tend to innovate quite a bit and try new things and they're trying to make it better. So I am impressed by that. Yeah. Yeah, we love that because, and we feel very heard too, which is something that I don't think everyone can say about a company is um, we, they're always listening and uh, they come out with new stuff and they're innovating and um, hear our feedback and that's all we can ask for. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have you guess who asked this question unless you already saw it. How's the new coach? <laughs> Suggest. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been really good and it's um, an interesting I saw another question there roll by. I was like asking if I was playing mixed doubles this year. Um, mm. So kind of the reasoning that the, uh, we have a new coach, which is Ryan Fry that joined on with us this year, who was my mixed doubles partner. So no, I'm not playing mixed doubles because we decided to just focus on our um, coach player relationship, which is a new one um, since he's never coached me before my team before. Um, but it's going really well. Um, it's, we're really enjoying our time uh, with him. We, he brings a lot of valuable information and he's fun to be around on the road and keeps it light. So um, all good things and um, pushes us and we're in, yeah, constant communication, uh, all, all of us in a little group chat. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah. It's been, we've, we've really, uh, we've had a lot of fun all together on the road and um, having a coach that, uh, like is very present and there um, and can see everything and provide insight is, is very valuable. So yeah. Love and he it. does TikTok dances. He got in on a yeah. few of those. I saw that. I roped him into that because I, I was, uh, <laughs> my teammates weren't on board and I needed, I had like just as I have to give her stuff. So can't be alone all the time. I know. So I have backup dancers. That, that was a hard, that wasn't the easiest one to jump right into the uh, squirrel in your pants one, I think, was where you jumped in. <laughs> you did. Uh, he's a good sport about it. I did notice that uh, uh, Sarah got a TikTok, right? But I don't know if she posted anything. Um, yes. So she just got it, but she's been in she a did. couple of mine. She's uh, slowly. She's, yeah. We did our uh, our little, like, 
front end duo um, dances. So she was good about coming and doing a couple of those. And I got Rachel to do a couple at the last event. And Tra we did the team dance and Tracy's in that one. So it's, we're slowly coming around, but it's, yeah. it takes a lot of prompting. <laughs> it does. And you know what? I thought the choreography was fine. And the timing was great for who we are as people. We're not dancers. We're just, you know. <laughs> I think people need to realize how hard doing some of these TikTok dances are. The first time I was watching them, yeah. like, oh, we could do that. And this is like a like, couple years ago. Um, just watching. I'm like, that doesn't look that hard. And then you actually try. These are professional dancers. This is not something I've never danced in my life. I was like, this is not something a normal person can do. <laughs> but we did our best. It actually took a long time to. Yeah. Well, most people on the SAP are not professional dancers anyway. It's just silly. It's just yeah. funny. You know, people, some, most people laugh, but some people I saw make jokes about that. It's fine. Oh, no. We knew. We I weren't, know. like, hoping it was going to go out and everyone's going to be like, wow, aren't they great dancers? <laughs> we were just trying to give fans what they wanted. <laughs> Oh, Ben's in here from our club. He asks, well, what do I have to do to challenge Team Home into a game on the Texas version of Arena Ice? So let me lay it out here. We play on hockey ice, and it's pretty wild. Some sheets have a lot of negative slope, and lining up takeouts is very hard sometimes. And so we think it might be an equalizer if we played against each other, you know, on our ice. Okay. It might bring you down to our level. Maybe. Maybe. So Ben's asking. He's challenging, basically. I mean, if you want us to come down and make it happen, well, we can TikTok live it and see how it goes. The Texas ice is terrible, Tyler. <laughs> it is an equalizer, though. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some curling clubs that we played on throughout the years that had similar conditions to what you're describing. It is way more frustrating when the game matters, like it's a play downs or something, we're trying to get to provincials and that's what we get for our ice. But if we're going down and just having like a fun challenge on this ice, yeah. I think I could convince the, the girls to go. I think this could be fun. We can make it happen. We'll see, yeah. see what we can do. <laughs> Carter says, hello. What's up, Carter? We, uh, he submitted a fall video recently. We got a question, let us know. I haven't really said it this whole chat, but thanks for the follows, likes, and shares. Hopefully you're following Emma as well, or whatever's going on when I see follows. I don't know. Um, we got a good amount of likes and people. This has been good. Oh, look who it is. Taylor Raylor. Does Emma have any fall videos to contribute? I don't have anything on camera that, yes, I'm sure I just, uh, maybe I jinxed myself. Um, I haven't, I have fallen. Um, and probably like a lot of times, um, in both my slides and sweeping, um, and sweeping practice. Um, but I don't think anything's ever been actually caught on camera that I can remember. Um, but it's happened. So it happens to all of us. Yeah. Um, Carter's coming back and saying his mom used to spare with team home. Oh, cool. oh okay. All right. That's awesome. Um, Gabby says, is it hard living in all different cities? Uh, yeah, it's, it definitely involves just a little bit more planning. Um, a lot of our practice that we do is individual, um, as long as we know what we're looking to achieve in practice. Um, so for us, just throwing it a certain way technically is what we're achieving. And then when we're by ourselves, that's when we focus on that. And that's when we get the most out of that. Um, we also will have quite a few training camps where we get together and we're, and then those are dedicated to um, all together team shots. Um, so it's all planned very, it's a detailed plan. Um, would it be easier if we all live in the same place? Yes, but that's not realistic um, at all. Um, we all there's a reason that we all live where we live uh it's not something we can just pick up and live wherever we're not highly paid professional athletes we um have families and um jobs and all that where we are so uh we make the best of the situation by we work very hard and we dedicate a little bit of extra time away from home for training that's not just during competition and reduce our competition time a little bit so that um, it doesn't feel like we're away all the time. 
Um, so it's a little bit of a balance, but we've uh, been making it work so far and we're all very dedicated. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, someone did kind of a related question. What do you do to practice when you're alone? I thought I saw Let me see what that back here. Sorry, what do oh, I do? How, how, how often do they practice by themselves? Oh, um, well, we all, uh, we're all on the ice most days. Um, probably a little bit less over Christmas, just based off of um, the holiday and being mm -hmm. there being less ice time available. But um, I'm on the ice, like usually five or six or five. Yeah, five or six days a week. Um, and if I'm by myself, it's um, an hour and a half about for my practice. And it's um, all planned and very detailed. And I have room holders and it's, I love it. Um, and if we're doing team training um we usually have longer blocks because we're throwing we're all throwing and we're playing mock ends against each other so those would be like around three three and a half hours on the ice together uh when we're to when we have all of us in town so that always looks a little bit different but uh lots of lots of ice time yeah drew myers 69 asked me what's your favorite what's my favorite go-to beverage at the bar after getting pumped nine to zero after four ends and i will tell you it's a club game. We don't shake after four. We just keep playing for fun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, the favorite one on that kind of night better be pouring a rope and shot after that one. Cause oh, shot. No, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah. Uh, it goes that way sometimes. Especially, it does. Especially on ice where lining stuff up is kind of hard, but I don't like to blame that a lot. So it is what it is. Yeah. There have it's... been a few like that. Yeah, and we it's... post them. We post them on TikTok anyway. No shame. Yeah, you, you just, <laughs> it's part of the game. Well, it's Tyler. Um, let's see. Tyler says the more beer curler drinks, the better they play. Is that true? Uh, I don't know. Not for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think it depends. Depends we on what, what the stakes are. Yeah, we definitely avoid any beer um, pre or during games. We, um, Sometimes we'll have a drink afterwards, but yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be drinking before either or during. Um, but yeah, afterwards I was curious. Do you have like one celebratory beer uh, or something? Yeah, sometimes it it really depends on the event and uh, when our next game is. And like if we have two games in the same day, we're still we're not gonna have a drink at all if we're playing again. Um, at the end of an event, we definitely will like celebrate a little bit or if we had um, a long day or something maybe with dinner, but uh, yeah, it just depends on the situation. It's not, it's yeah. not a ritual by any means. It's kind of just situation dependent. No, it's just curious. Cause I know everything's a lot more high performance now and you don't have the 1970s guy with the cigarette on the, on, in the hack and holding his beer while he slides out, you know, or way yes. beyond that. Looking a little different now. <laughs> Uh, Carter asked, do they have a lot of bond spiels down in Texas? We do have quite a few. Um, there's a club in Houston and Dallas as well. And they typically run one or two a year. We're actually adding our second one for the first time this New Year's. And we got it like 12 teams, which is good for a first year bond spiel. So going to make that bigger each year, hopefully. But yeah, we have a couple. They're out there. Anyway, um... My brother-in-law's here. What's up, Clay? How's it going? He's here to troll me a little bit. Clay came out and tried curling one time. It was fun. Uh, anyone else around? We've had a lot of good questions. I think Ben actually came with one. I missed it. Um, if this hasn't been asked already, it's kind of a variant. Emma, how has your game prep changed with your change in position? It's a little different than what we had before, maybe. Yeah. Um, not as much as my teammates, I don't think. But um, I focused a lot on um, just being prepared for the extra sweeping. So I made a lot of, um, a lot more sweeping in, within practice. I prepared um, over the summer. I always worked out, but I, I kind of just upped it a little bit knowing that the endurance side would be higher, um, sweeping 50% more. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you get into a long event, it can be. Uh, and then for my shots were quite similar going from third to second, uh, all the same shots that I practiced before I'm still practicing. It's just quantities 
um, of them that I'll get more of at second than I did at third. So I've just kind of changed the amount of shots that I play, practice shots that I play for certain shots. But uh, it all looks very similar for me. Um, luckily, uh, the biggest difference is uh, for 22 years, I threw at Rachel's broom. Uh, she knew all my tendencies, knew where to put the broom down for me specifically. And um, I just uh, had to make sure I was sharing all the information on tendencies and everything with Tracy. So she felt uh, just as confident and where to put the broom and could put the broom down for herself after. And so it was just learning each other's or her learning my throws. And then uh, I had to learn how she threw draws for sweeping and judging and all that. So a uh, lot of new, it's been really fun learning something new and doing something different. Um, but uh, luckily my, my shots weren't, weren't super different. Yeah. So there you go, Ben. That's a little prep there. Um, Taylor Rayler and Carter Dace are asking if I'm ever going to come to Canada. Uh, I want to. Yeah. Uh, this year is not the year. I have a young child, so she's only eight months. So we're not traveling a whole lot this year for that kind of stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it in Texas right now. Uh, I do want to come to Canada, though, and play. There's some great clubs. Yeah. There. Lots of places to play. Yeah. Um, and then Jones, I'm going to address this. Is there a broom up here? Yeah, the story, it, it was not put there for aesthetics. The story is just simply that that's my old broom and I need to like sell it. And it was on the floor and someone complained. So I hooked it up there in the spare slot. That's that's the extent of that story, actually. <laughs> um, Sir laughs a lot. I think this, this is a little different um, than what we've already answered. How do you feel the skip third situation on the team is working out so far? We kind of touched on this, but yeah, I think it's working out as well as we could have hoped so far. I think they're both still figuring out exactly what their roles are. Um, but to me, I think they're both doing it amazing. I think um, both of them are in a situation of, especially starting the season, we're in a situation of discomfort and have made it to look pretty seamless. Uh, they are both learning something so new. So, yeah, I think it's going great. I think that uh, obviously um, we've had a little bit of a success so far, but um, we're just trying to keep that rolling and learn from every game, win or, lo win or lose. We're just trying to learn and figure out um, how we can work harder and where we can get to. Awesome. Mitch Marie's back. She says, what's your go-to pregame meal and do you have a mid-game snack? Yes. Um, pre, so the mid-game snack, I started making little energy balls, kind of like, like they're like peanut butter and oats and all that. Just an easy thing to eat if we're hungry. Uh, so I've been bringing those to the last couple of events. Um, and then for, or like an RX bar. I don't know if you guys have those down the all right. But they're, they're pretty so. just clean kind of protein bars that you can have during the game. Um, and then okay. the pregame meal, um, we try to eat two hours before the game and something fairly substantial. Uh, so for me, like for me, I like something like a rice bowl with chicken in it, um, some vegetables or um, a salad. As long as they have some sort of carb, then we're good. But yeah, yeah so it changes depending on where we are. But that's uh, something that's pretty consistent. Uh, this actually touches on a question I've thought about before. It just reminded me. Um, in terms of sleeping, like if you get up early, and you got a game later and you want to rest, is there a certain window that you would take a nap in and how far before the game can that be? How long? We'd, we'd want to be up before that eating time. So... It would depend whether we could be up in time to get somewhere to get the food to eat that kind of two hours before the game starts. Um, but we wouldn't be going back to a nap after that point. Um, as a sweeper, uh, there's been games where I ate too close to the game and then I, it was you kind of feel sluggish because you haven't digested properly or well enough. Yeah. And then, or, um, you eat too far before the game, and you're starving by the time the game starts. So you're just trying to eat during the game. That's not ideal either. So um, if we could fit in a nap, do it sometime in a few hours before. Uh, and then I usually would only do a 30-minute 
where I'm barely sleeping, just kind of lying down. And I feel like that re-energizes me. Nice. And um, so I, I don't know how much time you have. I know we've been going for an hour. We don't have to go too much longer, keep you up all night. But uh, it's been awesome. I do want to add Tyler's question because I am curious. Rock color preference and why that color? Uh, I don't have a color preference when it comes to rocks. Um, we usually have a preference when it comes to knowing if a rock has performed better over a series of games. So if we have that information, uh, we'll just choose a set that we feel more confident in being more closely matched. But okay. we don't, it's not like, oh, I always want red rocks because different places you go to, sometimes there is a red option or there's yellow and blue or there's, yeah, it, you get all sorts of different colors. Um, but we yeah. just, our preference if we choose rocks would be just based off of the data we would have on them and make, and knowing them is important for us too. Yeah. I, I always choose yellow just because I feel like it's underrated. Everyone likes red. <laughs> I don't know. I just like, gotta be contrarian on that one. So, but you have no, no good luck thing about the color. I take it that that's okay. No, you get over that really fast and you find out <laughs> that on sheet B, the red rocks are our favorite. Like we like the red rocks and then on sheet D, we really like the yellows. Then you really like yeah. let that go. Cause you just want the best rocks. This is just coming from your rock book, right? That, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, how many more questions do you want to take, Emma? How much more? Can you do maybe a handful? Like Okay, let's see yeah. what comes in. Um, are you playing in any overseas cash spiels? Are there any? Um, there are some. We are not playing internationally this year. Uh, we might reevaluate that next year. We weren't 100% sure what everything was going to look like still starting this season. Um, so we've just been playing in Canada. Uh, and that's been great. There are some events internationally um, that we would be open to going to as long as they kind of fit into our schedule appropriately. But, yeah. Cool. And then Sir Laughs a Lot is here. What do you think of the No Kick Zone? We kind of touched on this. Um, you can give a yeah. quick one. Kind of... I, yeah, I think that it's, it's hard to say right now, too, because all of the events we go into have a different rule for the tick rule. Sometimes it's the eight like the eighth and extra ends only like the last time we were at, it was just those two ends. You could take the rest of the game. When we went to red deer earlier this month or in November, it was, there was no tick rule. You could take whenever you wanted. Um, and then I know that the world rule is you can't take it all throughout the whole game. So watching the European championships, they couldn't take it all. So you couldn't remove rock from the center line, the whole game. Um, my issue with the rule and we did know it was coming, is that if, if the rock is touching the center line, you can't take it. Um, but then it brings officials into the game to tell you whether, <coughs> excuse me, it's touching the center line or not. And I really love that curling is pretty self-officiated for the most part, player officiated. We have officials. They typically don't have to do all that much when it comes to officiating a game because um, everything the rules are the rules. Um, if a rock is biting in the free guard zone, you can check it yourself. So I don't like the idea of it being really close on whether the rock is touching the center line or not. And the decision of an official on whether it is or not could impact the game. Um, so right. I think that part, I, I hope that they figure out a way to make it hundred percent concrete and whether maybe there's some sort of, laser or something that they can have where it's like it's a hundred percent yes it's on the line or like a hundred no but i don't the muddy areas where i'm not a huge fan i agree yeah. it does take great skill to tick um i think that everyone got too good at it and that's why they've taken it away because yeah. it would just end the game and we i mean we played the tick for years and years and years and to keep control of the game when we had hammer um but uh uh, yeah, I think it's here to stay, unfortunately. Yeah. You have to love that the way that they check it to be on the line, though, is just like a carpenter's square. They put it against the rock, right? It's just that 90 degree angle. Yeah. I, there's got to be. Think it's funny. It's just a simple. Yeah. I just found, I've I heard of games where it, 
was kind of, it was very close. And then it becomes a decision by an official. Right. And you have to wonder if there's any bias there. And that could change the impact, the whole result of the game, which could change who qualifies for playoffs. And it just, yeah, it, it's a, yeah, I mean, just another element of officiating that gets brought in to a sport that we're very lucky doesn't have a lot of it. Too much of that, yeah. I mean, it's just funny because they come out with the carpenter square and put it down. It's, and then that some events now have like a custom one that looks like a curling stone or something. I just yeah. found that to be funny. And, they, and it does take time out of the game to come out and do that. You're right. I mean, I, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got a couple more here. That's what we got here. Oh, I like this one, Tyler. What do you do to calm your nerves when you play on the national stage? Or maybe it's getting toward a, a crucial moment in the game. It it definitely comes into play. The nerves are – it's a very real feeling. Uh, in the trials final in the last end – I knew if I made my peels, I or my two shots, I one of them was a peel and one of them was a chase. Um, I knew that we were most likely going to the Olympics, and I was visic- like visibly shaking in the hack. I would could not stop it, um, and I just I tried to focus in on what the shot was, and thankfully I made them. But I was shaking so much, um, so that feeling is very real, and and the reaction is real, and knowing in those big moments that um, you could make m- make it and go to the Olympics, or if you don't, it maybe your dream is crushed. So um, in terms of the only thing that I've figured out that can sort of help is like kind of trying to deep breathing and control your breathing and then just really focusing in on that, that small target. Um, but it's just something that you as an athlete learn to live with a little bit, I think. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I, those kind of nerves seem very intense. I don't know how you do it. I just sometimes you see the athletes in the Olympics. Yeah, they're kind of their faces look a little straight and look a little bit like things are getting very tense right now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I it's whatever tricks you have, it's good to know because <laughs> we could all use them um, even in our yeah, little bonds field games. <laughs> it's hard just refocusing and breathing is all I've figured out, and it's it's hard still. I mean, it's just enough when you're like at a bond spiel and you got like people behind the glass watching you and it's like a crucial shot. Even that makes me a little nervous. I'm kind of like, that, that doesn't even really matter, right? Yeah. It's just a bond spiel. You get used to the people. The people don't, I don't even notice anymore, but mm-hmm. the feeling of the important moments that you never lose, that, that'll that always be there. You, it, and the more you care, the more you feel it. So Certainly. I don't think ever going to fully go away. Um, there's a couple more here. Ta- which ones do you want to take, if any? Let me know. Okay. In terms of time, or I'll just the broom, chase broom, influence even being able to carve. So, <laughs> a few years ago, um, we had a situation with the brooms where we realized that they were doing way too much from a carving perspective, where they're actually scratching the ice causing the rock to take on the direction of where the scratches were. So we went and did some sweeping summits where all the players got together and we figured out what fabrics would have to be removed and what fabrics we could continue with. And we came um, to a group consensus that this orange mustardish fabric was the most fair and every supplier had to use it. So all the companies, the curling companies, all the brooms have to have this fabric. So the carve part is not an influencing the game too much. The fabric isn't actually doing that much. It's just heating more than anything. But um, the amount of carve versus what it was during that year is not even close. Now it's based off of a good sweeper. So yes, we realize you still can make a rough curl and you can make a rough go straight and it's more a technique thing. Um, but it's not just before we we almost described it as a joystick you could make the rock go whatever direction you wanted it to go in which is not curling anymore that's not skills based it's basically just making sure you're sweeping properly now at least it's like you you have to call the line right and uh, the sweepers have to work hard and they have to lean on the broom really hard and they have to have the right angle and um so i would say it's not really taking away from the game in any way it's just um that's where the game is and it's just learning exactly like what that angle is and working really hard to be as strong as we can yeah um 
I don't know if this is too deep of a question for this time, this hour, but uh, I hear a lot about carving and I've, you know, we've heard about directional sweeping in the past. What is the difference and what is the technique that everyone's going with now for carving? Basically, uh, high level. I think they call it kind of a knifing technique. Um, okay. So the broom is in a more vertical position from the rock towards the direction that you want it to go in, uh, as opposed to across the running surface of the rock. Uh, and then you're kind of putting pressure on an angle to make the rock take on curl. Um, and honestly, it just depends on the ice surface that you're on and how well that works. On some ice surfaces, it works really well. You can see it right away. On other ice surfaces, you don't really feel like you're doing anything. So I think it just kind of depends on, yeah, how much curls on the ice, the type of pebble that's down. Uh, there's a lot of factors, but it's, okay. um, I think we, we were watching la at the second half last season, um, some of the European teams started to do some stuff, and then we were like, what are they doing? So then we try kind of just <laughs> copied, and that's kind of how sweeping's been for the last eight years, I would say, is like someone does something different, and then everyone kind of opens their it. eyes and watches what they're doing and then does their own testing and figures out if it works for them, um, and then everyone starts doing it, and then something new comes in, and then everyone starts doing that. So that's just that's just how it is right now. <laughs> so we're, we're not switching who's closest to the rock anymore? Are we still doing that? Uh, the person, well, if you're trying to hold the line, the person, oh, you mean switch people? Yeah, yeah. No, I think everyone kind of stays on the side that they're normally on unless someone's injured or something or can't sweep. Uh, and then the, if we're trying to hold the line, the person countering that curl is going to be down closest. But okay. um, yeah, that's, a, that's the only consistent, I think. And all the okay. things that we've learned. <laughs> all right. Interesting. Okay. I actually do like Tyler's question. I want to slide it in here. If there's ever a curly movie made featuring your team, who would play you? Ooh. Oh, goodness. Well. Yeah. I'm going to have to just, just because I'm a big fan, I have to go with Blake Lively. Just, I feel like. That's not a bad choice. Yeah. I just feel like. She would, she'd be really good in uh, a curling movie and I'd be honored if she would play me. So I'll go that, I'll go with her. What about the others, the other three ladies? Hmm. I know, right? <laughs> Alexis Rose for, uh, oh, that's, um. Oh, Annie Murphy. Who's that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just because I have, um, I'm a big fan of Shit's Creek and I, uh, feel like I've become her in watching the show. So oh, that's right. It's become a a little bit of a, a running joke. <laughs> that, but yeah, uh, she'd be another good option. She actually would. It actually matches up pretty well. Yeah, I feel, and I I think it's just because I become Alexis. But that's <laughs> so everyone is so sad. People are like I can't unsee it now. I'm like I know it's my own fault because I watch the show too much. <laughs> I feel like for Tracy, it would be uh, what's her name from Gilmore Girls. Oh yeah, they it's like that. That's a... who has to play that. Yeah, they have a similar look. It's the closest I can think. Yeah, there's so many. Well, I always these questions always stump me because I'm yeah. not a quick thinker in terms of actors, and I don't. I I know them all when I'm watching them in the moment, but I can't right. think on the spot. Would a would a young Jennifer a younger Jennifer Aniston be a Rachel Holman maybe? Yes, maybe. Also, it's funny maybe. because Rachel and I uh, we have these like wine glasses because I was a big am I'm not gonna say was big Friends fan since I was a kid, and so, so I was like, "You're the Rachel to my Monica," and my nickname is always Monica just because I'm like a lot like her in my like clean freak OCD. Um, and a little bit of personality traits. And so it was always funny because her name's actually Rachel. And uh, she was like the Rachel Green. So, yeah, yeah. I think that would work. <laughs> That's awesome. Mitchie wants Kristen Stewart for Rachel. Ooh. Maybe. Trying to... They have a both of, a, like, a, an intensely focused face. So that could. Maybe. I like it. I don't have one for Sarah. I haven't thought that far ahead. Sorry. 
No, I, again, you're coming up with all of them, so. <laughs> well, you, you helped a couple. <laughs> um, all right. It's been like an hour and 20 minutes, like 20 minutes after I said it's been an hour. We, we just kept going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope it wasn't too long. No, no, this was great. It actually went by really great. fast. <laughs> yeah, it was a great conversation. I'm glad we finally got to do this. It's awesome. Yeah, me too. And I'm honored that you would want to because I'm just some dude doing curling stuff on TikTok, like whatever. So Yeah, but anything curling related on Not any bad. platform, including TikTok, is great for curling. So I think that what you're doing is awesome for the sport and it's growing the sport. Thank you. Um, especially, um, I, for the U S it's grown a lot since uh, the 2018 Olympics, but, um, the sky's the limit. So we want to get everyone hooked and I love what you're doing with it. Awesome. Okay. Tyler just says, what's your final advice for young curlers? End on that. That's a good end question. Um, I think like looking back onto my career when I started, um, every, loss and every um so many moments feel like so heavy on you and you, you're because we're we're all high performers even from a young age people who are in who are competitive are competitive from a young age and um things feel like you feel like the weight of the world is on you when you're going to events uh as a kid um but really it's just about taking all those moments and learning from them the success that you have when you're young that has no impact on who you are as a person and what you achieve as you get older. So um, one thing I would say is like have a short memory for those tough games because it's really easy to get wrapped up in them. And I think that ends up being a lot of time the demise of young teams is that you lose a big game and you feel like the world is over and really it's just the beginning. Um, and then the other thing is I'll say two more. One is like being coachable. Um, and it's not just being coachable and that bringing on a coach, it's bringing on a coach and trusting them and listening to what they say, because at no point are they coming in to say things that are going to make you worse on purpose. Um, and the last thing is we all have an ego. And when you're young, you don't really understand what that means. You don't really understand like the ego and the protecting of yourself. But I spent a lot of years of my career um, protecting myself if I missed a shot, like blaming something else or saying that maybe it picked or saying nothing instead of being like, Oh, I, I'm a, I'm not a robot. I'm a human. And I am sorry. I missed that shot. Um, and just being human in those moments, uh, one, it'll help your teammates understand better how that they can make the next shot because you've just been honest in what you did, but also it's very putting yourself in this vulnerable position makes you a better teammate. Um, makes you uh, easier to play with and um, you never know who you're going to be playing with, but uh, you definitely will be someone people want to play with if you are open and honest and a good, good person to have around. So those would be my things. That is some solid final advice from a woman who's toured the world and won a lot of it. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for doing this. A um, bunch of people saying thanks. Good luck, Emma. Shout out to Australia. See you there. Um, thanks yeah. for all the follows, likes, and shares. Thanks for being here tonight. It looks like we got a pretty good following uh, turnout. And this was awesome. Great. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone, for yeah. tuning in. And uh, maybe we'll do it again sometime. Okay. And thanks, Sablotron, for being there to make this happen. <laughs> all right. You guys have a good night. Be good, all right? And good luck, Emma. And thank you again. Thank you. Have a good night.